work is not that new. In essence, it is a shift of working culture or mindset towards a more meaningful or purposeful work to the individual. It is work that leaves you with more energy than you have put in. For instance, advocating for the under-marginalized, or perhaps from a more corporate perspective, training and coaching employees to help them achieve their fullest potential. Perhaps from a managerial or a leadership position, adopting the new world is to create a system that allows people to work on something that they truly believe in. I think a lot of things are interconnected and I always look back through history. Um, if you look back in World War, uh, just before World War One, uh, it was a time of the most you know, hyper-innovation. You've got cars just came in, you've got aeroplanes, you've got electricity, light bulbs, a whole bunch of crazy innovation. But it's very interesting, you know, innovation leads to displacement and displacement leads to confusion and, 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 and it leads to when there's confusion because I'm not sure, I, I thought I was riding a horse and I'm in the transportation business but now you want me to drive a car and what's all this and I, I don't get it you know and 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 when there's confusion uh, when people don't know what to do they go into war which led to World War I uh, the Great Depression <laughs> World War II uh, they also had their version of COVID which was Spanish flu uh, and, and, and 1945 after from 1915 up to 1945 uh, finally there was what we call standards when United Nations came in and said okay there's countries there's borders there's standards there's this and that um, and I think um, you know, if you look today, right, uh, and, and this is this is why we're talking about new work, right? Because what happened in, in the past, it created new work, right? Uh, that, that industrial way of working moved into what we call the postmodern way uh, in, in 1945. And, and then there was stability, 1945 to 1990, until the Berlin. And then you had hyper-innovation again with the internet, with, with uh, all these digital highways and, 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 and crazy stuff that's happening, uh, robotics, uh, 3D printing. So physical changes, digital changes, and biological changes. Now people want to live longer, can live longer, um, and, and David Sinclair and all his work, right? Um, so with all these inter forces, right, it's going to be just like in 1945, it created, it will create new work. But to do that, you have to go through from 1920 to 1945, there was 25, 30 years of transition, uh, of transitioning from old work to new work, right? Um, and I think the same thing is going to happen. Uh, but we don't understand it because we are in the experimental stage. We are in the stage where we don't have, we haven't had the standards. Okay, what's the standards of currency? Uh, do I need to trade in Bitcoin or, or Malaysian ringgit or this and that? There, there's no standards today, right? Uh, because there's no standards, work is transitionary. And whenever things are in transitionary, there is going to be pain. Uh, because we don't know. And both sides are fighting, one to keep status quo, the other is to drive this new change. But this new change has no standards. And, and so we are fighting many standards or many, many competing uh, uh, pieces. Now, forced together, there's also changes in people. Like if you look at, at we uh, as human beings, as employees, right? Not, not as employers, as employees, we demand more. Last time, we, uh, last time I remember when I first started in G1994, I was happy to be paid well and I was one of the few who got a laptop. Wow, I was so terrible. You know? Got a laptop, well, must be very terrible, must be an amazing person. Uh, so I felt really good. I didn't care about engagement, about career management, all these things, I don't care. Uh, you pay me well, give me a laptop, I'm happy. But then we went up Abram's man's slow curve. Now I want, five years later, I want, uh, I want employee, I want my friends, my, my colleagues to be friends. I want validation, I want recognition. Wow, then HR change, we bring in employee engagement, we bring in all these new things. Then I want to, later I want to work in a place that is meaningful. Uh, I, I want uh, a sense of purpose. Wow, then companies will start to change, right? So as employees change, companies also evolve. So I, I think it's a very complicated topic. Um, and I think we are in a we are in a phase where we're still experimenting. So there is no new way of working yet to me. Lah. It's trying to figure out what's the best transitionary step as we move to this new world, uh, hopefully with some standards at some point so that we can have peace. Uh, we can have 1945. They can have cold war, lah, but not necessarily war. Lah. Uh, they can have it in cold ways, but at least we have somewhat of a world uh, where there's clear sense of what to do. Lah. I worry. I worry when you start, we managers, I'm a manager too, when we start demanding what is the way, what is the rule, what is the policy, what is the measure, because then we are rushing into standards and guidelines that 
you know, may stop us from truly realizing the benefits of having to go through all that pain, isn't it? So that's the other point, right? Mankind, historically, as Roshan has put it, right, has had to pay very high tuition fees to move from one uh, uh, phase to another, right? One revolution to another, right? To the digital revolution, right? So I, I think we will be really, really stupid. I'm sorry, excuse my French, right? If we don't learn that we we must try to cut our losses, you know, don't go down and then right and then only go out, right? What history is telling us and what history is teaching us, and now that we have digitalization, the internet introduced to us in the 80s, right? Uh, and COVID-19, right, thrown to us, I think the lesson there is learn to include diversity, truly, right? And, and I worry when, when DEI is talked about, everybody talks about gender, it's not just gender, it's how I work as well, isn't it, right? So I'm not looking for standards, to be honest with you, I worry when people ask me for standards. Yes, that's the first thing in the boardroom or in the meeting room, people are gonna ask me, so how are we gonna govern this, right? I think I'll be carrying a placard on my T-shirt all the time. Maybe I should start with that. Peter Drucker's point, right? Okay. You think you're going to be managing? Step away. Isn't it? Step away, right? I was in London, right? And that was 2005, you know, right? 2005, I was introduced, formally, officially introduced to work from home. Right? So it's not a new thing, right? Now, when I was, when I had my, my second child, all right? When I had my second child, I was, uh, I took a quick break from the rat race. I was teaching. There's a different rat race in the, in the teaching profession, in the school. <laughs> but that was also when I realized that people were managing me uh, for what? Because it was, it was, to me, it was silly, right? As a teacher, I'm, I'm sorry, but, you know, if, if, if there will be teachers uh, listening to us and it's different now, but it, this was when I was, yeah, this was 1992, <laughs> okay, right? And I was a good teacher. How do I know I was a good teacher? Because students like me, number one. Number two, they are always prepared, right? And and they, they know their subjects. Isn't that success measures for a teacher, <laughs> isn't it? But I was told rules, yeah, standards, right? You must be in the teacher's room. You cannot leave the school. And I was like, huh, I have a baby at home, which only takes me like three minutes away. But this is a very, very, very rural area in Malaysia. Okay. Um, no traffic jam. Okay. Three minutes. Right? I want to go and nurse my baby. Right. And I'll be back. Cannot. Right. The rule is such. Right. I said, oh my God. And here I'm suffering in the, in the, in the teacher's room. Right. Sitting there, I'm ahead. My, my teaching plan, my lesson plan, whatever, I've done it. So, you know, we all want it. We have been testing in Maybank for many years now. Our first work from home case was 2008, right? And it was a gentleman. I, I'm, I always say this story. I'm sorry those who've heard me say this many times, but I'm proud of the fact that we were courageous enough. I was brave enough. My team was courageous enough to insist, right? Because we didn't have the policy yet. But this was a gentleman who was someone that I wanted to, to, to retain, right? But he tendered his resignation. And, and, you know, when I asked him why, when I hauled him in, I said, why? Why are you leaving, right? I thought you'd be enjoying your job and, and we are giving you a lot of TLC, tender, loving care. What else do you want, right? And he said, no, 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 it's not because of that. It's because I have a child uh, uh, who needs my, 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 my attention, right? Uh, autistic child, right? And uh, we don't have help. You know, all the help went back to Indonesia and did not come back, right? And I have aged uh, uh, parents and so forth. So anyway, to cut the story short, I said to him, you know what? It's okay. I'm going to find a way, but I'm telling you now, you take back your letter, right? You go work from home, 
check in with me you know every friday when you can right uh, uh we'll find a way and i went up to my boss right and said to him i've just made this decision i know we don't have the policy i know you don't like it but can you just support me <laughs> so yeah so that was 2008 but since then we have today right uh uh 3000 people on flex uh another uh uh almost 4000 since 2020 since 2020 end of 2020 has been officially given a letter to say you are permanently mobile we call it mobile work from home because somehow work from home right because everybody's had very painful experience with covid-19 and lockdowns right they equate work from home is lockdown <laughs> no it's not right it's not that you are stuck at home when you when you opt for work from home okay so anyway we have been experimenting and the the point therefore is there's no turning back there will be people who don't like it but you know it's about inclusivity i'm just going to throw the di thing right here you are preaching sustainability and diversity and inclusivity and yet you don't want to include someone who has a different want in terms of how to to organize his or her work. Friedrich Bergman is a professor of philosophy at the University of Michigan. He's also the director of New Work, an organization that emerged in the early 80s in response to the massive layout of GM workers in Flint, Michigan. Bergman was a conceived foundation of work in such a way that it serves people by offering them greater personal freedom and meaning. Today, The use of the term new work is mostly based on the idea that by strengthening the motivation of employees a better work result can be achieved as this increases the individual productivity. This motivation boost is to be achieved through a more self-determined work. right um but you know i am both an employer and an employee right in my diff- both two hats right so i'm not being defensive on any either party and i am saying that both has a role to play and both has to tangle it takes two to tangle right why do i say that because yes we can we can dissect and say what managers should do what the company should do and i will i will cover some of those like you have to communicate right don't talk transparency but you're not transparent about things right and how we did it in maybank for example right um back in when i first started in maybank when we wanted to to drive the the transformation program right i put up the people dashboard that's transparency right and the dashboard doesn't look very pretty it's okay right and that's that's the inclusion part right because the the calling is hey me bankers right help us help me right this is what we want to achieve right we're not there yet but here we will track this right and because we are tracking you know how we're doing right and you can then also have a say and influence how we proceed it was also an attractive recruitment uh, proposition right because people who initially had not so nice views of of the organization suddenly said wow let me join you right if that's what you want to achieve oh my goodness right it wasn't my brilliance or anything i'll i'll be lying if i say oh that was my strategy from the very beginning but i'm op- i'm an opportunistic positively person so when i saw that i said yeah there you go i'll put it as my <laughs> recruitment strategy as well right we seem to be struggling right even before covid and now we have an opportunity as roshan is saying right an opportunity to curate the new way of work and we don't seem to be interested we want to hold on right to 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 oh my god there are numerous managers roshan and aster in i know right who are just hoping and wishing that april 1st because our kg has announced right that april 1st everything will be as pre covid they have to go over my dead body first because <laughs> right because i want to defend and allow inclusivity not to let that 
the crisis go to waste. Just to provide some context for some of our audiences who may not be familiar or aware of how this term came into existence, this term was inspired after Bergman was called in to be a negotiator for a company that was thinking of letting go of some of the employees when the automotive wave hit the automation industry in Detroit. Essentially, new work involves giving employers the leeway to cut costs and boost productivity through automation, spreading jobs more equitably to make it easier for people to work shorter and more flexible hours, and turning workers into high-tech self-providers, able to manage their personal lives more efficiently and spend more time in entrepreneur ventures, education, family care, and other meaningful activities of their own choosing. Since then, he decided to begin his research thesis on helping people figure out what they really, really want to do. For me, the one thing that's missing in the HR is um, truly understanding the employee. Um, the, 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 you, you see, uh, as marketers, right? Marketers really know the customer. They know when the customer is going where, doing what, when they want to go for a holiday in Bali, and they're able to push ads at the right time and the right place to the customer. And my take is that why can't HR, who have more data on the employee than anybody else, right? We have cards that you can log in and this and that, and we know when you're accessing email. And I mean, there's so much of data, yet we don't have employee intelligence. Um, we are very good at customer intelligence, but we are very poor on employee intelligence. And for me, my very simple point, I think more and more HR needs to be the employee intelligence agent. And when we have employee intelligence, then we can empower the line managers to truly be the HR person because the line managers need to be able to have the data to say, hey, uh, my employee is disconnected with me. Why? Oh, there's no alignment uh, between my employee and the company. Oh, they're not ambassadors. Now, we should know all that and we should be able to provide the information to the line and then the line can do the HR work. Um, and to me, I feel that that transition is where I think we can do better. Um, so that's my, my only point. I, I, I feel that, you know, we talk a lot about HR technology and HR tech, but I think it's very simple. HR, like marketing, marketing moved from a creative function to an intelligence function. I think HR, likewise, internally, we must move from a, a talking or soft so-called uh, function um, or personable function into an intelligence function. Uh, and it's not customer intelligence, which is what marketers do. We become employee intelligence. So to me, I think if we do that really well, we will have the tools and the power to be able to truly be empathetic understand the employee and be able to do all the things that Dado Nora just talked about, be able to put them at the center of everything and give them what they need to be able to optimize them fully uh, and enable them to be able to be as productive as possible. In 2020, everybody was saying, wow, the last global crisis was a financial one, right? So the CFOs took the lead. Okay? The, the most recent one, and we're probably still in it, right, is a human resource-led one, right, because it centers around people. So you've always wanted, we've always wanted a seat on the big table or whatever we call it, right? So you we better step up, right? So I sweat every day, even when I, I'm speaking now, my palms are sweating, right, because I'm very conscious about the fact that am I am I doing the right thing? Am I three steps ahead? So one of our newer CEOs actually tried to commit suicide at one point, right? There you go. But because of the support and enablement, and that is what HR is. I, I don't like the word support, to be honest with you, right? Enablement of, of uh, uh, human capital team and so forth, right? The person turn around, right? And and that's diversity and inclusivity for you. We need tools, right? There is a limit to how much I can I can you know really help solutionize. I need a lot more here in this, right? So yeah, I can I can use the data quickly and all that. So I'll be lying to you if, if I say that uh, our CX managers are all fully tooled. We are working on it, right? There is a, a, a yeah a, a very rich data. But we need to get the data in people's fingertips and very quickly, I hope, in contact lenses, <laughs> right? I look at Esther and oh, all the information about Esther comes, right? There you go. So that's not a sci-fi movie, right? I'm, I'm sure it's going to be really, really soon. Is that a trick question, Esther? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because to me, to me, it's actually the same, right? Um... Of course, I want productive work, 
right? It is it is about being productive, right? Um, and the end goal is productivity, but and that's the new way or way I mean new work, right? But I want to do something that I enjoy, right? So that's meaningful work. Okay, so right now in today's time, especially. And I always remind employers, do not be arrogant because it is an employee's market. Okay, I, We are having problems because scarcity of talents is even higher now. But what, what do they lack? They don't lack technical qualifications, right? The agility, right? Uh, the, the, again, the hunger and so forth, right? So they will have choice. You, be, you end up with people who are not learners, right? And then you'll have robots, and human robots, okay, to deal with, right? So um, I think my, my answer would be both, right? And it's our job, both parties, to takes two to tango. It's our job to allow, again, inclusivity. You know, I mean, maybe I'll quickly chime in, but I, I think you're spot on. I think it's productivity. Um, but I think this is where, as good managers, our job is to create alignment uh, and, and meaning. Uh, right? I mean, I, I always remember the story about Socrates. He used to tell the story mm-hmm. and he said, look, there were two, three guys who were, who were hitting stones and breaking stones. And, and when he interviewed them, he mm-hmm. said, one guy said, ah, I'm doing my job hitting the stone and he's another guy he's like no i'm doing my uh, I, i'm i'm uh, what, what? and this guy was very excited and smiling mm-hmm. away and he said look i'm building a temple for my god uh, and because they were both doing the same job but one had alignment to the bigger picture of what the organization was trying to do which is to build a temple or whatever it is right so I, and i think as we with maybang or lee romics or whatever organizations you know we have this bigger purpose this higher calling of what we're trying to do um and whether it's to humanize uh uh stuff and and and, and, and our financial services in maybang's way or or us to transform malaysia and other countries um we that bigger purpose must be connected to the work that we do and i think if we can enable managers to have that skill of communicating the bigger purpose and what you're doing, then I'm okay to do an administrative task. Um, and, and I think that's where disengagement comes, when people don't see the connection between what they do and what is needed so that we can move the needle to get to where we need to get to, uh, to do this transformation work or whatever. I mean, all of us have very noble uh, aspirations as organization, um, but to get there takes lots of baby steps that may not be exciting, uh, but it's okay because we know bigger picture uh, it's to get to this bigger noble uh, aspiration uh, so to me that that is very critical the alignment of enabling your employees to see where we are going uh, I think it's absolutely critical to engagement you know I think I've got two two facets to that answer right firstly of course uh, there needs to be a lot more flexibility in the organization for the person you know this is not new Right, uh, but these are evergreens. Decades ago, I think before even I started work, right, people were talking about the uh, 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 round peg in square holes and all that, right? Uh, but do they actually do anything? No, because you have to wait for a vacancy somewhere for you to move if you're lucky and so forth. So think about having, for example, the the platforms. You know, before before I came in here, I had a meeting with with uh, on on customer experience with my with my. Uh, teams, right? Not just my own team, but other teams as well in the organization. And that was what I was talking about. I said to them, stop preaching and lecturing our people in terms of customer orientation and how to take care of customer. You think they don't know, right? Start changing things around them so that it will help them. One, as Roshan was saying just now, was tools, right? But the other one, you know, I gave them the simple example. You walk in into a branch, a a bank branch, right? You see the high tables, right? So your mind is automatically set transaction. I'm doing transaction, right? But if you throw away the high tables and then you put some some round tables and chairs and sofas, immediately people are going to behave like they are in a Starbucks, isn't it? So do you actually train me? To, to be relaxed, a bit more relaxed and spend a bit more time you're really carrying someone or you just change the furniture, okay? So there are ways to, to, to do things really fast. Don't lecture me that culture is going to take a decade. Um, been there, done that. I don't buy, <laughs> okay? I think for us, 
that's why I have my uh, I call it the Maybank Go Ahead Take Charge as an example that hopefully is helpful to you the, the person who asked the question right um, and like I said you know I'm also not I, I, I don't pretend that I know everything so I, whatever is good I, I'll copy the Japanese way I'll make it better okay so feel free feel free to take this and, and you know customize to, to your needs I have the go ahead take charge maybe uh, go ahead take charge it's four pillars right the first one is reskilling yes right so we openly allow Esther right uh, for people to actually put their hand up hopefully or managers put them up right to say need to be reskilled and it doesn't come with a stigma, right? So then we reskill. We recently graduated. I'm so happy, right? We, we graduated 300 over uh, messengers, you know, uh, our version of grab drivers, right? Who has been a messenger. I mean, they are messengers in, for 60 years, right? So, so we taught them, we brought them to class eight months, right? Basic uh, computer skills, basic Excel, they graduated and, and a few of them are 59 years old, you know, about to, to retire, right? So reskilling, okay? And then, and then of course, put them in the right job, lah, <laughs> isn't it, after that? So we call them the WE. So from messengers, they are now workforce enablers, right? Uh, sorry, workplace enablers. So they, they are office assistants, right? Promise assistants. Uh, Customer even, they, they can, can give advice to customers, uh, first, first level customer advisory. And then our next two is the flex in, flex out, right? Uh, I think that's literally you know, what it is. And then our final one, uh, choice, right? Our final one is entrepreneurship, okay? And because we are a bank, right? We have SME business, right? So the proposition is, if I no longer want to work in Maybank, right? I do want to pursue my baking skills, fine. We will help you with your entrepreneurship. That's the entrepreneur. So we, we turn you from employee to customer, right? And since we say we are a bank and we have the skills, advise this person, right, to, to be successful. So we don't just, you know, of course, part of what we would have paid for, for our exit package, right? goes into seed funding, into capital, right? And then, of course, the advice to make sure that for one whole year, we see that you have your income stream stabilized, right? So the advisory that, right? That's, that's business, that's banking of the future, really. On the flip side, I mean, if there's really no match, uh, at least from our organizations, which is a small organization, um, sometimes the, the, the best thing is to be honest and let them know and uh, have that conversation. I mean, we've had that with many employees at some point and we've managed to find them bigger roles, better roles that are more connected mm -hmm. with objective. I, I had a, actually, I, I had a case with Maybank where I was coaching a Maybank employee and the advice was maybe we should, uh, you know, move on uh, because it's a very different sort of expectation. Mm -hmm. I remember a candidate, I think I, I told Atonora after that, hey, this is a, a, a possible uh, exit and, and I think it was managed very well. Um, so I think I think there's, uh, the world is, is big enough. There is an exciting thing, uh, passionate uh, thing enough for everyone to enjoy. Uh, I think big, this engagement, I mean, the scary thing about this engagement, I'll close with this, 24%, uh, Gallup says 24% of Malaysian employees are actively disengaged, which means they are in the process of wanting to sabotage your company like, somewhat, like, right? I mean, that's what actively disengaged is, right? Um, and that's very alarming. Means one in four are not happy. Um, and to me, um, we, we, they shouldn't be there, right? They should be a place where they can be engaged, where they're excited, where they feel there's a future, there's hope. And I think if you can move that 25% or 24% to the right place, then you're able to extract the best out of them. And ultimately, uh, not having those 25% will be better for your organization. You're able to bring in another, uh, another uh, one in four that is going to be excited to be a Maybank or to be a Libra Mix or to be a, and, and I think that's where we need to be very clever. It's not really about us being the all in for everyone. Uh, our organization is great. Uh, two thirds of the, or at least 75% seem to be somewhat happy and engaged. Um, but there's always going to be some disengagement. Uh, we need to understand it and we need to help them uh, to move either in to the engagement part or out uh, to a place where they will be engaged. Because I think we are all having very short lives. Uh, it's kind of wasted if you're spending so much of your time in a, in a place where you're uh, upset and uh, not, not happy. Enough. So I, I urge all of you, if you are disengaged, you know, find a way. Uh, because that's where, like Dato Nora said, that's where mental health issues come about. Uh, is when you're stuck in a corner and you feel there's no way out. 
um, there is a way. There's always an option. I think I mentioned ecosystem just now, right? Uh, we need all hands on deck if we are going to truly reinvent, right? And the world is sick, right? So ESG is not a joke, right? So, and it's not just the climate. It's also how we operate. Because new way of work or the, the, the how we operate, we, if we are hybrid, if we are digital, then yes, there is, there is slightly less CO2 emissions and so forth, right? Uh, so it, it's all interlinked. Now, for humans, for, for individuals to have the option, right? of truly, truly being able to, and this is UN SDG, uh, one of the UN SDGs, right? An equal opportunity to come out from poverty or to continue to have earnings. I can not only have two choices. One is whether I'm working full-time, really working, or I'm at home, right? I have to give up the job because I want to take care of my family. I shouldn't only have two options, right? But, but you see, how hard is it to get companies to accept the fact that me giving two day in a week is doesn't make me lesser right than someone who's supposedly five with five day week but only actually working one day a week because right so you know it takes the entire uh, ecosystem